It's very much inspired by a painting that was one of the, the, the key exhibits in the recent exhibition at the National Gallery, The Sacred Made Real. And, um, but it's always in the National Gallery collections. It's always been one of my favourites that I've gone and visited. And um, it's the, the painting that I love is by a Spanish artist working in the 16th century called Zerberin. And um, the painting is St. Francis of Assisi kneeling under this, this big hood. And he's holding this skull. And it's just so kind of clean and dramatic and kind of full of kind of power and, and, and menace. And, but I, I've, I've always found the painting so interesting because to our eyes, a hood has completely different connotations than a Franciscan monk's robe. And I thought it'd be really interesting to do some kind of like large scale paintings where you, you're kind of like addressing that, that, that dichotomy and, and with kind of like our modern eyes looking at something old and... Um, so this is called Francis kneeling, so not Saint Francis. So I wanted to make it so that it, it perfectly fits the story of Saint Francis of Assisi who went on a mountaintop and he wanted to feel the wounds of Christ. Um, Jake's not holding a skull because I thought that would look a bit too kind of like Amdram Yorick to kind of our modern eyes would be like, what? Um, so I kind of, I, I procured a ring um, from a jewellery shop in Covent Garden and um, I, I wanted him to be kind of, you can see his eyes, you can't in Zerman's picture, but it, it's quite, kind of like he's done, he's been down and now he's kind of up and he's kind of like, it's like, is he getting the stigmata? Is it some kind of wondrous religious experience or is he kind of shouting at God or the void or some kind of like post-religious vacuum? It's, I guess it's about the angst of, of man. It's quite hard to, to paint in, in black. If you imagine... If you're painting in white, everything's kind of white. It's very easy to kind of get that shade. But, but black, it's like when you put black clothes on and you, if you look closely, you realise that your jeans are a slightly different shade of black from your top, from, from your jacket. And um, so it's a case of, 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 for me now, I'm kind of like looking going, oh, that bit's kind of dried a bit cloudy and, and that bit's dried a bit dark. And, and, and what do I need to do to, to kind of tie that all together? Because um, I think in, in the olden days, they'd just put lots of layers of varnish on it, which would have kind of knocked everything back and kind of would be the equivalent of putting kind of like three layers of bulletproof glass in front of it. But I don't really want to do that with this one. I want to leave it quite matte. And because when something's really shiny, it's quite hard to get a grip on it. Imagine when you're standing in front of it, the light's bouncing off it. So it's almost like you, you're kind of keep, your nose keeps pressing up against the, the glass. You kind of keep trying to get a, 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 an angle where you can take it all in. Whereas if it's matte, then the light isn't playing against you in that way. Wherever you stand, you can... You can see it, but then you, it's kind of hard to get that, that depth and, and to, to unify all the shadow.